All right, now we're going to move into what's called a balanced condition. Um, you might have a guess as to what that means. Because um, if we're talking about our, right here, I'm going to look at my strain. Man, I really need to learn how to draw straight lines. Okay, all right, there's my strain profile. And I like to assume um, I like to assume um, that my the strain at the extreme compression fibers, so up at the top. As ECU and a balanced condition would be when talking about my stream in my steel it is exactly equal to the yield stream previously we had just hoped it was at least equal to the yield stream because if it's at least equal to the yield stream then due to the um, Right, due to the, um, I'll just do the stress strain um, curve all the way back here. Due to our stress strain curve, if we have strain in our steel at least equal to the yield strain, so we're this or beyond. Then we reached the yield stress. It doesn't matter if our yield strain is exact, if our strain in our steel is exactly our yield strain, or a little bit more, or a little bit more. The stress will always be yield stress as long as I'm above that EY. Now the balance condition is where I'm exactly <clears throat> at the yield strain. depth to my neutral axis C called C balanced if I draw my stress profile associated with this yield strain profile or with this strain profile I'll have compression stress in the concrete with a magnitude of 0 0.85 F prime C and a height of A balanced, which is beta one times C balanced, right? It's A equals beta one times C. I'm just adding the um, adding the um, subscript balanced and then I have stress in my seal which the stress in my seal FS because I'm at yield strain would be equal to my yield stress stresses into forces C C sub C balance the compression force in my concrete that's the C sub C compression force in my concrete balanced due about at the balance condition and Tension at the balance condition. The 
construction force in my concrete would occur at a balanced over two, right? Assuming this is rectangular, right? We just learned the other day that if it's not rectangular, it might not be a balanced over two. But since this is, this um, stress is happening over a rectangular area, I can draw that in blue. My C sub C balanced. would be the magnitude of that stress my c sub c and my balanced would be the magnitude of that stress the 0.85 f prime c that's the magnitude of the stress and the dimensions the height of the stress block a balanced and the width b so C sub C balance would be 0 0.85 F prime C, A balance times B, the width of the beam. Similarly, my T balanced would be the stress in my steel, Fy, times the area, As, balanced. This is the area of steel associated with the balanced condition. <laughs> this means if I have exactly this amount of steel, AS balanced, when I analyze my section, this strain profile is true. So the balance condition means concrete is equal to the strain limit of concrete and the strain in my steel is exactly equal to the yield strain not more not less So now we are going to um, what we don't know here previous well we'll talk about it I'll write it down in a second but we, we want to know what that area of steel is associated with the balanced condition so what do we know now we know or we're given, we, right? Or we know, we know. The compressive stress of my concrete, the yield stress of my reinforcing steel, my geometry, so the beam width and the depth to the centroid of my steel, and we assume oh I guess we know it because we want to find we're gonna assume that it's correct and we don't have to go back and check that assumption so it's known it's not just assumed it's we're saying that it has to be we're saying 
that EC has to equal ECU and ES has to equal EY. These aren't just assumptions anymore. This is fact. <laughs> because we're at exactly a balanced condition. So now we can, we're actually going to use, um, kind of go the reverse of what we would do usually. Using known strain profile. Calculate C balanced the depth of the neutral axis. Um, associated with the balance condition. Okay, if I look at my strain profile, okay, this value up at the top, ECU, this value at the bottom, EY, this dimension, D, this dimension, C, balance. That's the depth of my neutral axis associated with the balance condition. Again, I'm going to use similar triangles to solve that. I know that similar triangles, I know that this angle, if I take it off that funny thing, this angle is equal to this angle, is equal to this angle. Right? Stare at that for a second if you want. This angle is equal to this angle. And if I look at this triangle, this little one right here, that's alpha. And that is just a smaller, right? I have this triangle and then I have that triangle. That's how those two thetas are equal to each other. Two triangles that I'm going to use are this big one and this little one. the purple one. I'm just going to do some basic similar triangles just so we all get a refresher. I maybe should have done this before. If I look at the purple one, tangent theta is equal to the opposite ECU over adjacent C 
see. Balance. If I look at the red triangle, tangent theta is equal to, right? If I look at this theta of the red triangle, tangent theta is equal to opposite, which this is EY plus ECU. On one side of the vertical line, I have EY, and on the other side, I have EU. Over adjacent, get the purple triangle opposite that value is ECU the adjacent the value is C balanced if I look at the red triangle this theta tangent is equal to this horizontal which is EY plus ECU and the height adjacent is D equal to each other. So ECU C balanced is equal to right, is equal to EY plus ECU over D. If I solve for C balanced ECU over EY plus ECU times D. So this is all calculating that depth of the neutral axis of a balanced um, cross-section. And I do that by using a known, I know because it's balanced, it has a certain strain profile. My concrete is at ECU, my steel is at EY. step that I'm going to do is probably something you could do at the very beginning, but um, calculate beta 1, which is based on our F prime C. to use equilibrium. Remember those are my two my two um, tools that I have in my box are the stress strain relations, um, the stress and strain profiles, um, and then equilibrium. Equilibrium of the cross section. Means setting these forces equal to each other. The force of compression in my concrete and the tension force in my steel. So, C C. 
So C balanced is equal to T balanced. My C sub C is that stress magnitude, 0.85 F prime C over the area, which is A balance times B. What's the dimensions of the area over which that stress happens? So 0 0.85 F prime C A balanced times B. equal to the yield stress because I'm right at yield in the balanced condition times my balanced area of steel. The area of steel associated with the balanced condition. A is also equal to beta 1c A balanced is equal to beta 1 times C balanced so I'll put that in there. Okay. Gosh, I can't draw beta. Beta 1 times C. So then I just solve for my balanced area of steel. This is the area of steel associated with the balanced condition. This is a fictional number, right? You probably can't have exactly this, but you never know. So if I, right, it's lingering. So what does this mean? What does it represent? If, let's say your area of actual steel in your concrete in your design is greater than the balanced. So what happens if your area of steel is less than the area associated with balance. If you have an area of steel less than the balance, that means Reinforced, right? Under reinforced is not a bad thing. <laughs> it means that your steel, because there's not enough of it, your steel, your steel will yield. before concrete crushes, right? <laughs> the 
before your concrete reaches its limit. side we have over reinforced that means there's too much steel the concrete will crush before steel yields. Which one of these is a tension controlled situation? Your steel yielding. You want your steel to yield tensely, right? That means it'll be more ductile, a less immediate failure. Over reinforced, your concrete might start crushing before your steel is yielding. Not compression controlled. Um, more brittle, sudden failure. So now we're going to talk about the reinforcement ratio. This is this is a row. That's that Greek letter row. It's an R if you speak Greek. Row. Your it is your reinforcement ratio which is your area of steel compared to your effective area of concrete. As in the amount of concrete that could possibly be in um, compression. So our area of steel is AS and our effective area of concrete is the width of our beam, assuming it's a rectangle, times the depth to the neutral axis of our section, right? This is assuming rectangular sections. Our row balanced, row B, associated with the balanced condition divided by B times D. Again, assuming a rectangular section. So again, you can ask the question if AS balanced, or if your, sorry, if your row is greater 
and your row balanced, or if your row is less than your row balanced. Which one of these is under reinforced? This one, right? Then you have an area of steel less than your area of associated with balance, so you're under reinforced. This might be over. Okay, stop right there.